I've got my Jenks Math Count shirt on. I like wearing this shirt because people can see me from far away. I also like wearing this shirt because every year I go to nationals, I see two or three students from Jenks representing Oklahoma. Got something really special going on in the Jenks Math Counts program. Now I got something special going on right here too. We've got some geometry. What, uh, no, 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 Har Harvey, Harvey, no. I got this. I can handle it. You taught me really what. what yeah. Okay, I'll tell. This is my friend Harvey. He's really good at geometry because he can see things that aren't there. And yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. He taught me everything I know about geometry. And because you taught me so well, you can go stand over there because I got this. All right, so you stand over there. And yeah, okay, yeah. You, you can tell me if I make any mistakes. All right, this guy. All right, geometry. We're gonna do some geometry now. Here we have an isosceles triangle. M N O. We're told that MN equals NO, they both equal 25 centimeters. And then we draw a line segment. We start from the midpoint of MO, and we draw that line segment perpendicular to MN. It's there at point P. And this point P is such that NP to PM is 4 to 1. Well, that means we can figure out some lengths right away. This is 4 to 1, that means this is 4 fifths of the whole thing, this is 1 fifth of the whole thing, the whole thing's 25, so we know that this is 20, and P is 20, and MP is just 5. And we want to find the length, the altitude, from N down to MO. And well, this is an isosceles triangle, so that means the altitude has to hit right at the midpoint of the base, and that's the point we drew this segment from, so these two meet at the same point right there on MO. Seems like an important point, so we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it x, and now we know that nx is an altitude. We've got a right triangle. We're looking for a length that's the leg of a right triangle. You know what tool's good for that? Pythagorean theorem. Wait a second. Got a right triangle here. We've got the hypotenuse, but we don't know the length of the other legs, so can't use the Pythagorean theorem on that triangle. And We've got this triangle here, the length we want is the hypotenuse of that, but we only have one leg, so can't use the Pythagorean theorem there either. And then this triangle over here, well, we've got that hypotenuse, don't know that. What are we going to do? I want to see right triangles first thing, I think, is Pythagorean theorem. I, that didn't get the problem right away here. Second thing I think of is similar triangles. So let's see if we can find any similar triangles here. Oh yeah, there are a bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of similar triangles here. We'll start with, we'll just look at these two triangles here. We're going to focus on this angle right here, this angle M. This angle down here is 90 minus this angle up there from this right triangle. We know that this angle is 90 minus that. Well, now look at this triangle. This angle over here also has to be 90 minus that angle up there. This angle is 90 minus that. This angle is 90 minus that. That means these two angles are equal. These two angles are equal. We got these two little right angles right in there. We've got some angle angle similarity going on. These two triangles are similar. Go ahead and write that down. That's got to be important. MPX is similar to XPN. And hopefully we can use this to find some more lengths in this diagram. Now I want to focus on side lengths that. Ah, that we already know. These two right here are legs. Think about legs. We'll look at the ratios of the legs in these two triangles. So we'll start with the little triangle here. We'll go the ratio of the long leg to the short leg. That's PX over MP. And that has to be equal to the ratio of the long leg to the short leg over there. So that has to be equal to PN to the short leg right there. That's PX again. All right, so these two have to be equal. We already know PN and MP. We already figured those out. So now we can find PX. We'll multiply both sides here by PX. Multiply both sides by MP. We'll call this PX squared equals MP times PN. Well, that's just 20 times 5. That's 100. And since PX squared equals 100, we know that PX is 10. And now we can break out the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle right here. We've got both the legs, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the legs. 20 squared is 400, 10 squared is another 100, 
400 plus 100 is 500, so we have the square root of 500. And of course, 500 is just 5 times 100. Square root of 100 is 10. So this gives us 10 times the square root of 5. And we are finished with this problem. Got that, Harvey? No mistakes, right? Did that well? All right. Oh, you would have done it faster. That's great. All right, we'll move on to the second pro. Oh, boy. No, 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 no. Hold on. Let me take a shot at it. All right, we've got a rectangle here. Oh, boy, with a whole bunch of new stuff defined in it. we got a rectangle. M is the midpoint of this side. And then N is on this side, such that this to this is 1 to 4. 1 to 4, just like in that last problem. They must really like that ratio in math counts. And then we draw this segment. We draw AM. We draw the diagonal. Define some more points, blah, blah, blah. Oh, boy. This is scary. Um, we're looking for the ratio of this to this to this. So we want to learn stuff about this segment right here, but we're only told stuff about this segment right there and a little bit about this. M's the midpoint of that. We aren't given any lengths at all. But I want to label my diagram with lengths so I have something to work with. That's about the only thing I have to work with right there. So we're going to start with that. The ratio of this to this is 1 to 4. And, well, just thinking back to that last problem, that means this is one-fifth of the whole thing. This is four-fifths of the whole thing. So we'll use a variable. We don't know what the whole thing is. We'll let it equal u. U. Not you. U. Not you either. All right. So the whole thing is u. This is one-fifth of the whole thing. We'll call that u over 5. This is four-fifths of the whole thing. So that means this is 4 times u over 5. And let's see what else this lets us label. Well, immediately we can label this side of the rectangle. This side is u, that side is u as well. Now what? Uh, no, 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 no. We got this. Oh, you know, that last problem? We had perpendicular lines, right? And we see perpendicular lines, we think, well, first we think the Pythagorean theorem. That didn't work right away, but then we thought similar triangles. The perpendicular lines aren't the only time I think of similar triangles. We've got parallel lines here, too. Parallel lines, that almost always means similar triangles. We've got similar triangles right here. B, S, A is similar to N, S, C. These two triangles are similar, and we've got the ratio right away. This is U, this is four-fifths of U, so that means the ratio of this to that is four to five. This is four-fifths of that, and that tells me we're going we're gonna to want to focus along this segment, because that's the segment we care about in the problem, this is four-fifths of that. It tells me that this is four-fifths of this. So NS to SB is four to five. Let me go ahead and write that down. That's got to be important. Of course, I, that tells me something about this, but this includes both this piece and that piece. Huh. I mean, I'm going to label my diagram some more. I'm going to go ahead and, and give a variable to B, and I'm going to call that V. We're using the whole alphabet in this problem. And this whole thing is V. We know that this to this is 4 to 5. That means this is 4 ninths of the whole thing. So I can write down this right away. This is 4V over 9. And this piece over here is 5V over 9, but I need to break that into these two little pieces. Yeah, no, 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 I got, I use the similar triangles. I use the similar triangles right here. It doesn't help me to say use the similar triangles. Other similar triangles. What, what, what other? Oh, you won't tell me. Okay, okay. Please tell me, Harvey. Think outside the box. Oh, that's really funny. You're no help at all. Hey, wait a second. That's brilliant. He's right. Think outside the box. Ah, this guy. We go outside the box. We care about where this hits this. We go outside the box with it. We extend this. Now we've got more similar triangles. I'm going to call this point P out here. Outside the box. Very smart. Very smart. Ah, we've got similar triangles. N, R, P. B, R, A. We've got more similar triangles to work with. 
But we don't know what this is out here. Oh, yeah, we do. That's where the midpoint comes in. Whenever I really get stuck on a problem, I start to think, hey, what have I not used yet? We hadn't used the midpoint yet. Now, was one reason we could think, let's go look over here and see what we can do. We go thinking outside the box, and we use the fact that this is a midpoint to figure out what CP is. This equals this. These two triangles right here, they're not just similar. They're congruent. B, A, M and C, P, M are congruent because this side equals this side, these two angles are the same, and this angle and this angle, they're both right angles. These are congruent triangles. That means this side equals this side, and now we know that C, P is U. So now this whole side here, N, P, is nine-fifths of U. This side up here is just U. So when we look at these two triangles, NRP and BRA, the ratio of this side to this side is 9 to 5, because this is 9 fifths U and that's just U. So the ratio of this to this is 9 to 5. I'm going to write that down. We know that NP to AB is 9 to 5. And now we focus on the segment we care about, this BN right here. And we use these two triangles that we just learned something about, and we see that NR to RB is also 9 to 5. And that tells us that this piece right here, this RB piece, is 5 fourteenths of this whole thing. And B is the whole thing. This point R splits it into pieces that are 9 to 5. That means this piece is 5 fourteenths of the whole thing. And now we're almost there because we've got this piece, we've got this piece, and now we can just subtract to figure out what that piece is right there. So, oh, different denominators. We can deal with that. We'll put them as a common denominator. 9 times 14, 9 times 10 times 14 is 140. Subtract 14, you get 126 is our common denominator. So, 4 times 14 is 56. This piece right here is 56V over 126. We've got the piece in the middle we're trying to figure out, and then this piece at the end. We'll also put that over 126, multiplying top and bottom by 9. That'll make the top 45V. And now we can figure out what this middle piece is. All three of these pieces have to add up to V, because that's what this whole segment is. So we need the numerators here to add up to 126V. Well, these two pieces add up to 101 times V. That means this middle piece has to add up to 25V. And now we're ready to solve the problem. We want this ratio, NS to SR to RB, this to this to this. Now we need X, Y, and Z to be integers. So we want to turn this into a ratio of integers. Multiply through by 126, divide out the Vs, and those are the integers right there, 56. 25, and 45. And then finally, we have to just add them all up. We can't get any lower than this for our integers. We can't divide out by a common factor, all three of these, and still have them all be integers. So this is as low as we go. 25 and 45 gives us 70. We add the 56, we have 126, which of course makes sense, because if we added these three fractions, they need to add up to V, so the numerators need to add up to 126 V. So these three numbers, they add to 126. And finally, we're done. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'll say it. Because of Harvey, we're done.